Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Hello and welcome to Share Talk. Today I'm joined by Bob Holt, who's chairman at SureServe. How are you today, Bob? I'm good, thank you. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. I haven't spoken to you for quite a while. In the meantime, you've been quite busy, uh, it would appear. Uh, I think that before uh, we spoke the last time, I think uh, you didn't have um, uh, SureServe on your books, but uh, you've, you've got a new company there. And Could you tell us about that, please? Absolutely. I'm best known, of course, for having built Mears over many years. And um, I was helicoptered into SureServe four years ago when it was known as Lake House. And at the time, it was $47 million in debt. It had only been floated about 15 months before. So it really was a problem business. The banks were not willing to support it any further. Shareholders had taken a very uh, a very deep haircut. And um, anyway, I went in there and uh, delighted to say where we are today. Um, the business is performing really well. We don't owe the bank anything. We paid off all the debt and the business. Uh, it had, when I went in there, four divisions. And it was fairly obvious that our property and construction business were not performing well, uh, managed very poorly. Uh, so the idea was to get out of those as quickly as we could. I started to downsize them and eventually exited them. I sold them about two years ago, just before Carillion went. So my timing was right. We always had two good other divisions in energy and compliance services, both highly regulated and both non-discretionary spend. So clearly growing businesses, cash generative businesses. So for us, regular recurring revenues, um, generating cash means that you know, we, we obviously clearly doing quite well. COVID uh, came along and we, we came out with our results for the half year to March. In, in, we, we, we announced those in May. And we came into COVID in a very strong position. We Our earnings were up 27% year on year. Um, and that was in spite of, of losing it probably a couple of weeks of COVID at the end of March. And, um, you know, we, we've, we've announced recently a trading update that what we're looking at doing is we're still confident of hitting this year's number to, to the year to September. So clearly we're almost there. So very comfortable hitting what was the consensus forecast for that, which was around 10 million. So having had a fantastic first half and having survived that through COVID suggests that I think shareholders are looking for a very attractive uh, next 12 or 18 months. And that, that's where we are. It's a good business. Compliance is highly regulated. We, are, we have the, the country's largest gas testing business in the public sector, big, bigger than British Gas, and, and a range of other services. So you're, you're, this is, this is a, I mean, it's a truly national company, uh, recurring revenue, um, reasonably predictable and transparent as well. Um, but h- how scalable is it? Is it? I mean, you're like a near ninety million pound company now, and you're sort of you're in, you're in the sort of the no man's land between a small company and a big company. Was that a fair thing to say? Absolutely, and uh, of course, you know, I've been in I've been in the, the, the public markets since the since the eighty the early eighties. So clearly, I've most ups and most downs, and these are difficult times for small public companies, even at ninety million market cap, as you say. You know, we are a tiddler, and you're in that scenario where, you know, there's not a lot of interest for public companies. So you have to go out and and um, and attract a, a wide range of shareholders. And for those who followed my career, you know, having built Mears, and you know, that became a 55 bagger. Come on, th- those things don't happen. And along the way, we had clearly large institutional support, but also great support from private shareholders. And uh, you know, in the very early days, I'm talking about the the mid to, mid to late nineties and early early nineties. The um, you know I would regularly go and see private client stockbrokers and a range of high net worth people who who would be out there to be interested in the stock. So you know I I I, I said I would come out uh, and talk to shareholders a lot more when I you know when this business was an attractive investment proposition from my perspective, and that's what I'm doing. I'm just spreading the word now where we are. We are a great business. I, I believe we've got an exciting future. And as I've always said, follow the story. And if you follow the story and you like it, then you'll like it even more, I'm sure. And so I suppose uh, with this market cap now, you are, you're, let's say, uh, the, the company has uh, the, the size to, be, to attract uh, potential institutional investors. Um, is that something which you think is, is, is easier to do now than it was before? 
I think it's certainly easier to do now than it was during our difficult times. Uh, the share price has doubled uh, since I got involved, which I suppose isn't, isn't too bad. Um, clearly, there's a long way to go. Uh, we have, we're, we're, we're on a, still about 10 times earnings this year, which in a, in a progressive business generating cash, paying a dividend, isn't a great rating. So, you know, our newest competitor is a company called Marlow, who are on 30 times. So, you know, I'd, I'd like to think we can bridge that gap in the next 12 months. Right. And what are the engines for growth? It would be acquiring other businesses or would it be sort of organic growth? Well, there is good organic growth anyway, and we're anticipating growth in excess of 10% year on year. So that, that's that's a given. These markets are highly fragmented. I've been in and around them for many, many, many years. And I think, you know, blue collar services, man in a van type businesses, you know, there's probably nobody had more experience with that in the UK than I have. So I know the markets, I know the mentality of the people in them. And I know how to manage and motivate disparate workforces. So, you know, and these are in regulated markets. So that's where we have, I think, a slight edge on other things which are less less regulated. And even in any any downturn coming in terms of public spending, they are not, repeat not, going to stop testing their gas boilers and or lifts and or electrical services and or their energy. I mean, our energy business in Scotland is a big business. In addition, in that energy business, we manage the fuel poverty programmes for the Scottish Government and the Welsh Government in joint ventures. These are great initiatives, and of course, there's, mo- there's always money to be put into these opportunities. OK, well, that sounds like a healthy picture. Bob Holt, uh, Chairman at uh, um, SureServe Group, PLC, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Zach. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.